reaction that my opponents are blatantly advertising stem cell research as being a kind of miraculous cure that will enable solutions to diseases previously thought incurable, such as cancer. That's ridiculous. In fact, if you think about it, what purported stem cell research breakthroughs have actually done anything for humanity on the whole? What disease on the insanely long list has been cured? None. Stem cell research, no doubt, is dogged of shortcomings due to a blend of lack of unity and efficiency and laughable results. Unfortunately, its well-oiled propaganda and advertising machine is keeping it alive. We are strongly against the government funding stem cell research because it's wasting our money and yields little results. I'm here to inform you about the ghastly horrors of stem cell research. It is a grossly inefficient money pool. To date, about five states, and only five states, have authorized funding for stem cell research. About $3,130.5 million have been allocated to stem cell research by state administrations, including California. Very little of the promised money has reached researchers, according to genetic engineering and biotechnology news. This cash would have been better spent as a research grant awarded to a private institution. Also, stem cell research has an unfortunate tendency for having an insatiable appetite for more funding, which is not helped by how little we know about the field. In almost 20 years, not one cure has been developed, yet billions have been spent. We're in an economic recession at the moment. We cannot afford to spend billions without any visible results. Stem cell research is also plagued by lack of leadership. Nobody's overseeing all the projects, causing confusion and the loss of millions in dollars. This is partly due to one recurring fault in stem cell research. Stem cell research is powered by fantasies of profit, not knowledge itself. Secondly, for years, scientists have been falsely throwing out breakthroughs that have no particular meaning or importance. For example, on October 30th, 2005, according to health.dailynewscentral.com, scientists said that stem cell research could lead to growing organs. Note the word could. There are no guarantees that actually mean something in this field. Even the researchers aren't confident in their promises, so why should anyone else? Every piece of random, trivial research is classified purposefully as a breakthrough. It's the only way the foundering scientific field can survive. Another example. BBC News reported in November 2002 that scientists have found a way of making human fossil stem cells implant into the brains and spinal cords of rats develop into nerve cells. It could bring treatments for neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's a step closer to reality. The great demonstration of the word could, and simultaneously, another useless piece of information. Again, on April 14, 2007, scientists supposedly discovered that a new breakthrough may one day help treat infertility. On February 27, 2008, another purported advance in stem cell research occurred. According to NewScientist.com, stem cell research may reduce cancer risk. On June 25, 2008, the Indian News reported that a breakthrough may pave the way for brain treatment. This is blasphemy. This meaningless drivel is pathetic. At least publish something useful without any empty promises. Stem cell research has had limited success, however. In 2002, a cloned dog advanced stem cell research. It actually advanced the field and showed some material results. But according to the fine print on this health.dailynewscentral.com article, it took thousands of egg cells, 1,095 embryos, and 123 canines to accomplish this feat. So you see, successes in stem cell research are costly beyond belief. Both victory and failure have their cons. Why should we even be thinking about researching stem cells? Stem cell research has been tremendously and ridiculously overhyped. People have been promising way too much without showing much true progress, setting it all up for total annihilation. It's not proven its worth and has not justified its cost in any way. No true progress has been made in the field. Consider this. If you had been told that animal testing had run into a wall and had no showed no results whatsoever, would you let it keep going? Would you let it run on, draining resources and time, not to mention taxpayers' own cold cash? That can be compared to stem cell research. Sure, it has had some mildly exciting discoveries, but it needs a central focus, strong leadership, better techniques, and discoveries that truly confirm that stem cell research is significant to the development of the modern world. We should not be forced to fund such a deplorable excuse for a scientific area of study. In the end, both the scientific branch of the field and the results of this field could crucify this scientific area of research.
Without any improvement, how can we agree to the continuance of stem cell research? 